Gentlemen, welcome back to the shop. I just wanted to share with you, I discovered, uh, not that, I discovered a superpower and I'm gonna show you, I'm gonna tell you how to get it. It fucking, if you're a North American man, we all essentially got the same bugaboo, struggling with not carrying around an extra 20, 30 pounds of carcass up and down the mountain, saving up for a winter what never comes. You know what I'm talking about, the old boiler, the beer gut, the, the Miller muscle. It's been a bugaboo of mine my entire life. Of course, when I was younger, I was a, a closeted dork, but also uber jock. I had no problems with weight control up until I hit, uh, oh, you know, early 30s. And then as, uh, as men are wont to do, you gain about two pounds per annum until, <laughs> lo and behold, you're a fat fuck, can't see past his dink do. Here's the superpower. Breakfast is the most important part of the day, important meal of the day. If in, you're a bacon and egg producer, pork farmers of America, uh, for the rest of us, it's fucking deadly. Makes us carry way too much weight. So I discovered, and by discovered, I uh, happened upon this little technique in my YouTube feed. I didn't invent this. It's called intermittent fasting and uh, time-based feeding. And I like that feeding because I'm a fucking animal. I'll eat everything. I, I need it all. I, I get the old uh, <laughs> Oscar the Grouch tin can lid, and head up to the belly up to the buffet table, lock the front hubs and auger right in. I mean, food is the cheapest drug available. You know, you feel pretty shitty about yourself. You go get yourself a, a Big Mac and a super big gulp. All of a sudden, things ain't so bad for, you know, for five, ten minutes until you uh, got to strap on <laughs> the helmet, the mouth guard, and the seatbelt on the turlet. So what I've been doing here for a quarantine, that is 40 days, I have only been eating from noon to 7 p.m. So breakfast, I generally didn't give a fuck about, but I would feel... I would get worried if I was on site that I'd get hungry and then I'd get hangry and yada, yada, yada. So people mistake low blood sugar for hunger. And low blood sugar is just when you're eating highly glycemic foods consistently and you're feeding your gut bugs and so forth, they secrete little toxins what make you want more sugar. That's not your brain. You got plenty of sugar in your system. That's your gut bugs talking to you. And you get, you get all hungry and shaky. That's not hunger. That's low blood sugar. The difference between low blood sugar and hunger is that hunger is more of a dull ache, what you can deal with. If our ancestors were not able to deal with being hungry, we wouldn't be here. <laughs> because animals in the nature, and make no mistake, we are animals, are very capable of going days and days and days and still functioning perfectly well without food. So after 40 days, the results, 19 pounds, roughly nine kilos, something like that, eight kilos, gone. Uh, no muscle mass lost. I'm not sleepy after lunch. I don't need to stop. I don't get it. It's, it, it is having a superpower. Everybody around you has got to stop for to go and get a burger or whatever because they're hungry it it's such a fucking waste of time you're in the flow you're just doing your thing and then you think to yourself oh it's noon i have to eat that's total bullshit you don't got to do nothing and this empowers you to realize that being hungry it ain't no thing, man. So there's no disorganizing your day around food. It's fan-fucking-tastic. This alone is worth the price of admission. You notice you got to stop in the morning. You get yourself a, a croissant or some slutty burger somewhere with, a, with an egg on it. Calls it breakfast sandwich. You know, some disgusting. Also, if the food is gross, you don't even want to eat it. So even if it's lunchtime, you know how, how you get... Like, oh, I'm hungry, I gotta eat, I gotta eat something. And it wouldn't matter what you put in your pie hole, as long as it was a, a highly caloric, you were happy as a pig and shit. That doesn't happen anymore. There are no grudge meals when you're doing this because you've already put in the effort to not eating 
for that 16 hours, why the fuck are you going to stuff your pie full, hole full of something gross? You ain't going to do it because you're mentally tougher. And this is a real big superpower is there's no food induced itis after you read a McNeil. Only Canadians that get that. But you know that feeling you get after lunch, you feel a little bit sleepy. You don't get that. If I'm driving into the evening, I just skip supper and I don't even feel sleepy. Your, sleep, your, your last meal, say, is at 7 p.m. So you got a belly full of food for when you go to bed at, at 10. But the thing is, because you cut it off at 7, well, I'm not having a tea bag and, and dainties and then dainties upon dainties and then I don't sleep well because I got a belly full of dainties and tea, you know. So that nonsense of eating well into the evening is so ridiculous that you'd be sitting in front of the TV at 11 p.m. and need some Doritos in your mouth hole. It's because when you go to sleep now, as you're sleeping, this is the, the tough part, is the changeover from energy systems. When you go from blood sugar to having your glycogen stores released from your liver, there's, there's a lull there, and that's when you feel all shaky. Well, you're sleeping through that in the evening. So when you wake up, you've already changed into your glycogen stores. So your brain, your brain only runs on sugar. That's all it runs on. It cannot run on fat. So you do need some sugars. But because you store them in your muscles and you store them in your liver, when you're already switched over, when you wake up, it ain't no thing not to have breakfast. You just have this dull kind of hunger pang ache. But realistically, it's fuck all because you know that you're going to be able to eat like a king at noon. It's, it's so much easier than limiting at every meal, you know, snacking and, and you got to snack 18 times a day and you got to only eat these foods. That's way more difficult than just plain old not eating. The last thing, which you probably can guess, is increased fitness. Now, I used to, you know, I, I don't run unless somebody's chasing me. It's hard on the joints. If you, I don't work out anymore. I used to work out heavy, but my joints started getting sore. And you kind of realize your joints are sore at 25, 30. You know, you, you got a long road to hoe. So I don't go to the gym, nothing like that. That's fucking so boring. I get out in the nature. And that way I don't get the germs and all the, the, the fucking wanks and all that stuff. So the gym, it ain't for me. But my fitness through the roof. Why is that? Because I'm not dragging that extra 20 pounds of sugar lard around with me. I can do shit on the bike now that used to just about kill me. So if you're anything like me, your bugaboo, your comfort is food. As I said, cheapest drug available. You're on the road, you're, you're lonesome, you're away from home, you're tired, you're sick, you're, you know, food is my bugaboo. And if you're anything like me, it's a constant struggle to keep them jeans from getting too tight. So this, you're going to want to try this because it fucking, I can say this with all the conviction of a freshly converted cultist, this intermittent fasting, it's the cock for Dolly. Thanks for watching. Keep your dick in a vice.